It's basically the best we have right now to replace a healthy pancreas. You can just chillax. I'm Tom, I've been a diabetic for over 30 years and since I was diagnosed I've been riding the blood sugar roller coaster. I often started my day with very high blood sugars, feeling really crappy. And I suffered from hypos too, feeling even more crappy. If you are riding that roller coaster too, I know how exhausting it can get. And I know you are, otherwise you wouldn't have clicked on this video. But I want to help you and that's why I want to talk about the one thing that I discovered just recently and that improved my blood sugar control the most. It's not a secret meal recipe nor a super strict daily schedule. It's an algorithm. More specifically the Control IQ algorithm on the Tandem T-Slim X2 insulin pump. The Control IQ is a hybrid closed loop. The system receives your blood glucose readings from your continuous glucose monitor and automatically tells your insulin pump how to adjust your insulin dosage. It still requires your involvement but it does a lot of thinking and decision making for you. So it's semi-automated if you will. It's basically the best we have right now to replace a healthy pancreas that is available commercially and approved by relevant healthcare authorities. The main goal of the system is to maximize the time you spend in the ideal glucose range between 70 and 180 milligrams per deciliter. The actual target range of the algorithm is even more narrow between 112 and 160. The Control IQ algorithm predicts where your glucose will be 30 minutes from now based on your current glucose rant and it adjusts your insulin dosage real time. When it predicts that your glucose will go below 112 milligrams per deciliter it will decrease your basal insulin delivery. When your glucose is to drop below 70 Control IQ will completely suspend the basal insulin to avoid hypoglycemia. From my experience it won't always completely avoid the hypo but it avoids it most of the time and if it doesn't it significantly lessens the effect of the hypo. And by by the way it will restart the basal insulin as soon as it's safe. When the control IQ predicts that your glucose will climb above 160 milligrams per deciliter it will increase your basal insulin. And when your glucose is to spike above 180 milligrams it will also start giving you correction boluses to get your glucose back to the ideal range. When the system predicts that in 30 minutes you will be in the target range of 112 to 160 it will just keep dosing your pre-programmed basal rate. And while while the system is doing all this for you, you can just chillax. All these little tweaks done automatically by the pump is really the number one thing that got me off the blood sugar roller coaster. Guys, all the little corrections done by the Control IQ are done not only based on your glucose strength, but also on a predefined set of information you enter into the pump. Your weight, the average daily insulin dose, your standard basal rate, your correction factor and your insulin to carb ratio. I was able to set everything up myself and the algorithm helped me so much to smooth out my blood glucose graph. It catches highs and low a lot sooner than I would and it practically eliminates the hypos. Sometimes when I feel that my blood sugar is rising I pull up my pump to check my blood sugar and I see that I really am rising but that the control IQ has already taken care of it and it gave me a small correction. Hit like if you think that's really cool. I think it is but what do you think? Now one thing to be careful about if you enter inaccurate information to your pump you will not get 100% of the algorithm. The system is not learning from its mistakes. It's just working based on the data that you've given to it. So if you're not sure how to set up all the parameters, definitely talk to your doctor first before you start using it. They should be able to help you set it up. And by the way, don't be afraid to tweak the parameters as you learn from your experience. Because sometimes I need to do little tweaks here and there to get better results. And please keep in mind I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice. I'm just sharing my own personal experience. Now the system has its flaws too and I will get to them. But first I want to talk about if and how my time in range improved. Before I started using Control IQ my time in range was not too bad. Most of the time I was in the high 70s. But when I started using the Control IQ algorithm I suddenly jumped into 90s like low 90s, mid 90s. Sometimes I even get to 97, 98%. And even on those days when I'm really busy my time in range is consistently above 85%. The 
system has two special modes for sleep time and exercise time. The sleep mode allows the control IQ to target a tighter and little bit lower glucose range from 112 to 120, but it doesn't give you the correction boluses. You can activate sleep mode manually or set up a sleep schedule on your pump to have it start automatically at a specific time. For me, night time and sleep mode is really the number one thing where the system helped me the most. It improved the quality of my sleep so much because I don't get too many alarms at night anymore and I don't get too many lows. I almost get zero lows at night. And overall I feel a lot safer going to bed because I know that my autopilot is still awake helping navigate those blood sugars. And the best thing about the sleep mode is that when I sleep 8 hours I get more than 30% of time in range completely for free. I don't have to do anything. I just sleep. Plus I wake up with perfect blood sugars somewhere around 110, 120 and it happens almost every day. Now on to the exercise mode which allows to target a higher glucose range from 140 to 160 when you are working out. The exercise mode is quite good but I found out that I need to activate it well in advance of the exercise because as we all know the insulin reduction effect doesn't take place real time just like that. Whenever you activate the exercise mode you still have quite a bit of insulin on board from the previous period when the pump was running on the standard mode. And a very similar thing happens at the end of the workout when you switch off the exercise mode. And it will take some time for the algorithm to catch up, but it doesn't take too long. Important thing to keep in mind, Control IQ doesn't know what you are doing right now unless you tell it. It will do a lot of thinking and decision making for you, but not all of it. So when you plan to eat for example, you still need to bolus manually and even pre-bolus when needed. A little disadvantage of the system is that sometimes you just know more than the algorithm, especially if you are an experienced diabetic, but you can't tell the algorithm what you know. You cannot use temporary basal rates for example. I know that whenever I film videos for you, my blood sugar typically starts rising because my adrenaline activates, but the algorithm doesn't know that until it sees the trend and it sees that the blood sugar really is rising. But I already know that 15-20 minutes earlier. But there is no way for me to increase the basal rate temporarily by 20% when the control IQ is active. Another example is when you take too much insulin by mistake. Normally you would immediately suspend your basal rate because you don't want to drop too fast. But the control IQ doesn't know that you took too much insulin until it sees the blood sugar really Really dropping really fast which can be again 20-25 minutes later and it might already be too late. Whenever you need a quick fix like that you basically need to switch to a manual mode, suspend your basal rate or increase your basal rate or whatever you want to do and then in a few hours return back to the control IQ mode. What I really enjoy about the algorithm is that when I'm really busy I don't need to pay attention to my insulin pump and to my CGM at all and I know that my blood sugar will stay in a reasonable range. Control IQ just takes care of it for me and takes a lot of stress away. I think it significantly reduced the mental burden of diabetes and it allows me to do things that I want to do rather than focusing on blood sugar management 24-7. Now I already told you that I achieve better time in range when I use Control IQ. But what about my HbA1c? Well my HbA1c and my average blood sugar is actually slightly higher when I use Control IQ than it was before. And I think it's because the algorithm is programmed to target little a bit higher level. It's actually targeting 130, 140 level most of the time when you're in the standard mode. That's a little bit higher than when you would normally be if you were trying to control manually. So if you're trying to reach the lowest possible HbA1c and the lowest possible average blood sugar, not the highest possible time in range, Control IQ might not be good for you. It might actually make it worse for you and your results might be worse. But if you're targeting time in range, if your goal is to be time in range as much as you can, then Control IQ is the way to go. My personal experience with Control IQ is that I typically get to HbA1c of 6.3, 6.4% or something like that. I know that if I was controlling 100% manually and I was paying really a lot of attention, I would probably be able to get to 
to sixth, maybe higher fives. But I'm actually comfortable continue using the algorithm because I know it will avoid my blood sugar skyrocketing, it will avoid any severe hypoglycemia, I just feel safer and I think that this time in range in this situation really might be the more important measure. Again, I'm not a doctor but this is my approach and that's why I like Control IQ and that's why I continue using it. Control IQ currently only works with the Dexcom G6 CGM sensors, not with Freestyle Libre. We can assume that it will work with Dexcom G7 and Libre 3 at some point because they are both designed as ICGMs but we will have to wait for that. Now keep in mind the algorithm makes real changes to your insulin delivery depending on the CGM readings. So if you don't fully trust your CGM using the system might be a little bit stressful. I do trust the Dexcom G6 fully except for day one and especially first six to eight hours when the system usually is very inaccurate for me. So I always always turn off the control IQ on day one of my new sensor and I turn it back on when I see that uh, glucose readings stabilized and are reasonably close to my glucometer readings. And I'm really trying my best to avoid any faulty sensor because if you have a faulty sensor that gives the system totally wrong information then the system might turn into a dangerous weapon. Now control IQ is a great tool but it took me some time to get used to it. I didn't get perfect results on day one and I was a little bit frustrated during the first few weeks. And I actually had to change some of my blood sugar management strategies. So my advice to you would be be patient, give it time. Don't give up too early if you don't see results right away. And I'm making another video soon where I will discuss my biggest control IQ mistakes and share my favorite control IQ tips and hacks. I will post it here once it's ready. So click it and watch it next. If you want to connect with me directly then join my Patreon community or book a private session with me. Links are in the show notes and in a pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Ciao.